guys and welcome to Nick Rit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're gonna go over how to make these super adorable little dinos. And so this is gonna be a two-part series. This is part one. We're gonna go over how to make just the base body or just this part of the dinosaur. It's a little complicated and I do go step by step and trying to show you how I make his shape. I do fast forward through the repetitive parts like if I've already mentioned it then I do that. But generally, I'm really excited to show off this little dino. It's my newest pattern, and I'm going to have a printable PDF for this link down below on Ravelry that you can click on for the first week, and you'll get that for free. But as always, I'll have a little screenshot of the pattern itself. So if you want to make the pattern, you can totally do it with just the video. If you want to support the channel, you can totally go and buy it on Ravelry however you want to do it, or go on Patreon. We have that too. But generally, I'm really excited to share this today. We have the base body, which has some interesting shaping, as you can see on the neckline here. I'm gonna show you how I taper it down and how I taper it back out into a body, which I think is a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. It's a little complicated to show it on camera, but it's a lot of fun to do this pattern. I really love it. And then in part two, we're gonna go over how to do the rest of the dino. I made this one as a custom little guy for my nephew. I'm really excited. And I'm gonna be doing this in orange and green. And uh, this one, I made a little rainbow one. And then this one's just a really cute little green one and uh we're gonna go over how to do the scales the tail the little arms there is a belly that i'm going to show you how to do and i chose not to do the belly on this one because i found it to be a little too complicated with the rainbow and i didn't want to like outshine the rainbow scales so i just omitted the belly on this one you can totally omit it it's not a big deal super easy and then also look at these little feet look at those feet they're so stinking cute so that's why this video is gonna be just the base body. It's gonna take about an hour-ish to get this one through. And then the second tutorial should be probably another hour, honestly, for uh, time and length. I'm gonna be posting these probably a couple days apart. So part one's gonna be uploaded, give you enough time to then get this done, which could take a little bit. Um, and then you'll have this up in a couple days. And again, the printable PDF will be linked down below. Make sure you check out part two if you were a little late in the game to get that down below. All right, let's go ahead and go over to Pass Cody over what you'll need to make this cute little body. So for this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn. I am using I Love This Cotton in the Bouchetta color and also in the Forest color. I'm using this as the body and this is the like added on belly scales and all that stuff so this is the body in the legs and the arms and this is just for the added effect i think it'd be really pretty to have an orange and a green one so you will need some worsted weight yarn just make sure that if you're using two different colors and you're using a different brand then to make sure both of the brands are the same brand doesn't matter if you're using any other thing like a red heart soft or something like that just make sure that both of the colors are red heart soft that way you don't get weird multi-textures going on with this pattern. I recommend using the same brand and same kind of subset of yarns. So you'll need some worsted weight yarn. I am using a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furl's Odyssey. It is a gorgeous crochet hook and I love it. It's ergonomic, it's so pretty. And this one's in rose gold, I believe. I think it's called Odyssey. I'm not 100% sure, but it's super nice. 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. If you need to change it for a gauge, just make sure that your stitches aren't showing, uh, aren't big enough that you can see your stuffing through. Speaking of stuffing, you will also need stuffing. Uh, honestly, get a pound bag and you'll have more than you need for this. I'm also using these really cute little eyes that I got off Amazon. Aren't these adorable? And I saw recently that you can put these on and snap them and then burn the end of it. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet because I'd be terrified of burning the cotton. But supposedly it makes it so that your safety eyes don't pop off and gives it a bit more uh, strength to your safety eye. I don't know. I saw it on TikTok and I've yet to try it because I'm terrified of burning things. But that's a thing that I did see. I love these eyes. They're super cute. I believe these are a 15 millimeter. They're either 12 or 15, something like that. But the larger the eye, the more cute or kawaii it will look. So make sure that you're getting something at least over 12 millimeter unless you really want like a pinpoint eye. I'm also going to be using marking pins throughout this, but you don't have to. This is a um, not required step part here. You will also need a darning needle, which I will be using for sewing and putting all my stuff together. And I'm using just some sewing scissors. You can use whatever scissors you want just to cut your tails and get all that sorted. All right, that's all you'll need. Let's go ahead and go over to the pattern. So 
So for this tutorial, we're gonna be doing the base body as one piece. So the big from the head all the way down to the little bottom here, that is all one piece that is not seamed in any way. This nice little shape, I'm gonna show you how to increase, how to decrease specifically to create this neck, and then how to increase again to get you back to this big bottom part here. So to start out, we're going to do some increasing. You're going to want to be comfortable with single crocheting, working in the round, how to decrease as well as working through front loop only. That's not necessary for this pattern, but I like how it looks a lot better. I also do something called an X stitch versus a V stitch, which I've explained in other videos, but I'll show you what I mean once we get that far. So I am going to start out. We're going to be making a magic ring and we're going to be doing increasing how we do for a typical amigurumi. So we're going to be going from our six stitches up to 12, adding six stitches every single time. 12 to 18, 18 to 24, 24 to 30, 30 to 36, and 36 to 42. We want 42 stitches by the end of this. So for rows one through seven, we're going to be working on doing those increases and getting the top part of our head formed. I make my ring a little bit differently than usual. I'm gonna create a little slip knot like so, put this onto my hook, and I'm gonna show you how I do my magic ring. If you're familiar with my tutorials, then you know that I just chain one, and then chain two, and then I skip the second chain and I go back into the first. And here, this is going to be our first round. We're going to make our ring and put six single crochet inside. We're then going to increase this ring by adding six stitches inside of it. So one, two, three, four. We're just skipping the second chain and going back into the first, five, and then six. We're then gonna pull our tail, pull that nice and taut. And this is what I wanna show you by front loop only and also by X stitches. So for the second row, I do this my own way. I'm gonna take my tail and work that through the stitches, but first I'm gonna go through that top loop only, not through both loops, just the top one like that. And then I'm gonna pull my tail forward and I'm going to wrap under you can wrap over if you want, but this is an X stitch versus a V stitch, which is all just how you wrap it. I'm gonna wrap and pull that through and then pull under again. So that is what an X stitch is versus a V stitch. We're then gonna go back inside that stitch because our goal for row two is to increase every single one of these six stitches so that we get up to 12. I'm keeping my tail as if it is a part of it. That kind of just helps me pull it in so that later on when I cut it, it's, it's not a big deal. So you also might want to use a stitch marker. I tend to use my tail up until like the middle of the body and then I'll switch over to a stitch marker. I'm going to take my tail, pull that forward. And again, we're going to increase again. We're going to do this every single stitch, putting two stitches into a single stitch from the previous round. That is what I mean by increases. I get that question a lot. So I hope that that makes sense. So we're going to go into the next stitch and increase every single one of these. We're gonna go into the next stitch. It's kind of hard when you have the tail in front, but it'll be a little bit clearer once I get through the second round. There we go. Pull that. Don't pull your tail so much that you end up coning at the top of your uh, amigurumi here. It can happen. I actually am thinking I might make a plushy version of this just to show how big it would look if I did it with plushy yarn. If I do that, I'll put that at the end of the video. This one or part two. Or I might even put it at the beginning of this video when future Cody edits things. Who knows? You'll know. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12. We're going to take this tail and let it just kind of hang out in the back. And for row 3, we're going to go from 12 stitches up to 18. So here, we're going to single crochet 1 into the next stitch. And then increase all the way around. So increase. 1, and then increase. If you hear the plows outside, I apologize for the weird noises going on in the background. One, and increase. One. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I reach that tail again. Increase. One. Ooh. Tug that a little bit. Increase. I lost my tensioning for a second there. One, 
and increase. And then we have one more, I believe. Let me actually double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, we have 18 stitches. I lied, I did not have one more increase. I'm going to take my tail and pull that through. And so I do something called staggering my increases. I do a lot of little weird things, but they all add up to a cuter amigurumi in my opinion. So that's why I share them in every video. Um, I do something called staggering my increases. So if you were to do an even amount of increases for the next round from 18 to 24, usually if you're stacking your increases, which is, which is what's typical, you're going to single crochet two and increase. However, I stagger mine because I find that it makes the circle look much more round and that you cannot tell where the increases are as easily. So for the belly, I stagger this as well. And it shows here, that's an increase right there, right in front of my thumb. And then the increases over there from the previous round and because they're not lining up when you stack them they all line up which is what happens when you single crochet one increase single crochet two increase three increase so on and so forth but if you stagger them where you take your even number ones so the ones that have for example single crochet two and increase if you stagger that and you split that increase into the middle of those two stitches so single crochet one and increase and then single crochet one, that makes it so that the they don't line up and it looks a lot better. So let me do that one more time. Single crochet one, increase, and single crochet one. And you'll see here, there are still two stitches between your increases. It just looks a lot more round in my opinion. So that is why I do staggering versus stacking. I think it looks a lot better. So I'm gonna do, for that, for round one, two, three, four, we're going to single crochet one, and increase, and then single crochet one. And again, if you instead want to just do your typical stacking, you're also free to do that. It just will create a line, which I try to avoid when I'm doing my amigurumi. That's because I'm kind of perfectionist, so that's why I do that. And then single crochet one, we have two more repetitions, so single crochet one, increase, and single crochet one, and one, increase, and then one. Uh, I just think it looks a lot better and also it hides the stuffing a bit more in my opinion because if the increases are less visible, then the stuffing is less visible. So we're gonna grab here. I'm gonna try to pull some more of my yarn. It fell off the side of the desk and I'm just going with it. That's what I've decided. So we're gonna now uh, go from 24 up to 30 stitches. And how we do that is we're going to single crochet one, two, three, and then increase all the way around. So one, and this is not staggered because it's an odd number of stitches between your increases. So one, two, three, and increase. One, two, three, increase, and I'm probably going to fast forward through the rest of this round until we get to the stitch marker. All right, we've moved our tail forward. We have finished with round one, two, three, four, five. We're now on round six. And this is actually going to be the same thing that you do. This same body is what we're going to be doing for the belly. So keep that in mind if you want to do this up until this round that I'm going to be doing um, to get to 36. That's the exact same thing that I did for the belly. So I'll show you that in the part two video, but that's going to be done in green on this little guy. And I'm going to show you how I do a seamless fasten off in order to make that look nice and tidy. And you can't even tell where my fasten off is, can you? Look at that. All right. So now we're on round six and we're again going to stagger. Usually you would single crochet one, two, three, four, and then increase. But instead, because I'm staggering, I'm going to go one, two and increase and then one 
two. We're gonna do that one more time. One, two. Increase. And then one, two. So again, you still have four stitches between your increases, increases here and increases here. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna continue that on until I get to my 36 stitches. And then we will go on to around seven. So. Row six is done. Now we're on to row seven, and we are not going to do our staggering because it's not an even uh, number of stitches between your increases. So now this is our final one. We're going to be going from 36. This is the 36 stitches that you need for your belly. So that is the belly as well, just for part two, so that when I talk about this in part two, it makes a bit more sense. Um, we're going to be going from 36 up to 42, though, for the top of our little head. So here we're going to want to single crochet five. So one, two, not split our yarn. It keeps splitting and I don't know what's up with the skein. Two, three, four, and five. And then the sixth stitch is what you're going to want to add your increase to. So six and then seven, getting you to your 36 to 42 getting you from your 36 to your 42. So one more time, two, three, four, five, and then six stitch. You do an increase. I'm going to continue this until the end of the round, until I have 42 stitches. So we just moved our tail forward and now we just finished with row seven. We have gotten up to 42 stitches and for those 42 stitches for rows eight through 13, so for six rounds, we're going to just single crochet around and around and around maintaining that head shape basically. So from here to here, that's where we're at, we're at right now and we're just going to single crochet around, kind of giving your head that height that it needs as I bounce my camera for good luck. Uh, you need that height in order for your head to be as tall as it is. So we're going to single crochet around for 42 stitches for six rounds and I'll be right back and show you how I start doing this really awesome, really cool shaping along the neck here. Be right back. All right, so we have finished doing our six rounds around. I have added my eyes so that they are along the front of my amigurumi and I have split it off here in the first 21 stitches and the last 21 stitches. So these eyes are along the first 21 stitches and my tail is just where my tail has been this entire time at the very first stitch of our round. I hope that makes sense. So the first 21 stitches are what we're going to start decreasing down, but we're going to maintain the 21 stitches along the back. So I'm probably just going to speed forward through that whenever I just have to single crochet across. Otherwise, this video is going to be like an hour long if it isn't already going to be that long. So here we're going to start doing our decreases and we're staggering them still i'm going to pop up what we're doing every single round that way you can keep up but generally we're on row 14 now i have a place to marker on the first of stitch of our 21 on the back and here we're going to grab our working yarn so our stitch that i just kind of blew out there we're going to put this onto our hook and for row 14 we're going to single crochet five decrease three times and that will evenly get you to the stitch right before your stitch marker and then you're going to single crochet around 21 stitches for the around on the back so here our goal is to get from 42 to 39 here we're basically just doing everything that we did at the beginning inversing it by decreasing and only doing it along this part of the rim so here we're going to single crochet five so one two, three, splitting our yarn, four, nope, gotta fix that, 
I was hoping it wasn't actually split split. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then decrease two, which I put my hook through the front loops of those two stitches that I would like to decrease. And then I single crochet them like normal. So one, two, three, four, splitting it again on the fourth stitch. One, two, three, four, five. I had to count real quick. And then decrease those two together. One, why am I splitting this so much? One, two, three, four, five, and these last two stitches decrease. So here's what I'm going to do next. I want to keep track of that. So what I'm going to do is take the stitch marker, pop it off real quick. That is our first stitch of our 21. I'm going to single crochet that first one. And then I'm going to take this and put it back over on top just so that I can keep track of my stitches like so. And then plop him back on. So I single crochet the first stitch and now I just need to single crochet the rest of the 21 up until I get to this tail. So I'm going to fast forward until I get to that point. Three. And 21. So now I'm going to take my tail and pull that through just to keep it going forward. And now we are on row 15 and this is where, I mean, we stagger. So instead of single crocheting four and decreasing, we're gonna single crochet two, decrease, single crochet two, three times and getting to the stitch right there. So that'll be evenly across those. So we're gonna go one, two, decrease these two together, one, two, one, two, decrease those two together, one, two, one, two, decrease these two together, one, two. And again, I'm going to smooth my marker forward, single crochet that first stitch, take this stitch marker, put it back on top, just so I can keep track of it, and then I'm going to single crochet the rest along the back. Twenty-one. We're going to take our tail again, move that forward. We are now on row 16. And we're going to single crochet three and decrease three times. So one, two, three. And decrease those two together. One, two, three. One, two, three, decrease these final two. Moving along our little stitch marker here, single crochet the first. Apparently split our yarn, but that'll be on the inside, so it's fine. I'm not going to stress out about it. I don't know what it is about the scheme, but I am splitting all of my yarn with it. And now we're going to single crochet the rest of the 21 here.
21, move our tail forward. We are now on row 17, where we are going to stagger across three times. Our goal is to get this down to very small. You're gonna notice that it's cinching up really quickly, uh, especially the quicker as we get along. So we're gonna single crochet one, and then decrease, and then single crochet one, if you're frustrated by the staggering, you're free to just single crochet two and decrease three times, and that'll work just as fine. You'll just end up with a horizontal line. So one, decrease, one. It's snowing here, so you're gonna hear a bunch of plows as they go by. One, decrease, one. There we go. Undo our little stitch marker. Single crochet our first one. And then we're going to take our stitch marker and put it back on. This is keeping it so that it's staying straight along the eyes. That is where our center is. That's why I like to use these stitch markers, otherwise I can lose my place and then I'll be like, well that looks straight. And then I'll have added like way too many stitches that I did not mean to add. So again, single crocheting across 21 stitches, so three, four. And 21, move our tail forward. And now we're going to go on to row 18. We are single crocheting one and then decreasing three times. So one, Put these two stitches together. One. Decrease together. One. And decrease together. Moving our stitch marker forward. We're going to single crochet the first stitch again. And then move our stitch marker forward like so and then we're going to single crochet across this 21 on the back again we're getting very close to the last decreases for this Twenty one. Take the tail, move it forward. We are now on row 19, which is our final decrease for the scaping of the net. And we're going to decrease every single one of these three times. So there are six stitches here. You're going to decrease all of those along the front neck ridge here. So one, two, one, two, and then one, two. So you should have only three stitches between your tail, your initial start, and your uh, over here start. So I'm going to move my stitch marker over again, do the single crochet one and move it along, and then do our 21. It's a little confusing when you get towards the end, a little bit right here. So 21. We're gonna move our tail forward and we have a very, very tiny neck. I don't stuff at this point, not quite yet. Um, I wait until after I've done all my increasing to get this back up to be big until I stuff the head and then I stuff the head and then I wait until um, I get closer to closing off on the bottom before I stuff the rest of the body. So I do stuff the head, but I wait until after my increases are done, which is what we're gonna be working on next. We're on now on row 20. I'm gonna go grab a drink real quick because I'm losing my voice, but I'll be right back. All right, so we're back for row 20. We should be at 24 and our goal is to add three stitches to this little front section here between your tail where you started or whatever your stitch, mark, st stitch marker is. If you're using something else, you can totally do that. But these three stitches need to increase back up. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did here where we're doing the decreases, but we're doing the exact opposite where we're increasing it essentially, or mirroring it. That way it'll all blow back up this way. So now, you know how we just did decreasing for all those stitches? Now we're gonna increase times three and then single crochet around that 21. 
So we're going to be going from 24 up to 27. So here we're just going to do a quick little increase on all three of these stitches. So one, trying not to, you know, go into our stitch marker there. And one, two, and then one. It gets easier as you go, I promise. This is the hardest part. As soon as you get it down to like that little tiny part, you're just like, what am I supposed to do? But look at his little face. His face is already starting to be a face. Don't you know? All right, we're gonna move that tail slip, that stitch marker forward. Do our first one of our 21. And then put that stitch marker back on. That way I can figure out where I am later on. I know it's a little tedious to keep moving the stitch marker along, but I think it helps a lot. It keeps me keep track of it and it helps keep my face straight. <laughs> so I'm not like adding stitches where I shouldn't be. So again, two. Twenty one, moving our tail forward. I'm also gonna move the angle of the camera real quick. That way I'm not gonna go off of it because I feel like I'm going to do that and people are gonna get mad. So let's move move that just slightly up. That way I can stay in the center. And now we have our six stitches here that we want to go up to nine. We are in row 21. So how we're gonna go from 27 to 30 stitches total is we're going to single crochet one into the first stitch of our increase from the last round single crochet one and then increase that gets us from six stitches along the middle right there to nine increasing your three stitches one two and then single crochet one and then two in the increase again moving our little guy forward and single crochet one to do our 21. 21, move our tail forward, our initial tail. You'll notice that's kind of navigating all over the place. It's okay. Um, look at how cute his little head is. I love the shape that this takes so quick. It's not ridiculously hard it's just you have to kind of keep track of stitches so now we are on the front part here and we're going to stagger our increases so we're going to instead of single crocheting two an increase we're going to single crochet one increase and then single crochet one one Increase, single crochet one, one, increase, single crochet one. Move our tail forward and do our 21. We are now on row 23 and we're going to single crochet three and increase for these three times. So one, two, three, increase on that fourth stitch, one, two, three, Increase and then one, two, three, increase and then single crochet your twenty one. One, moving our tail forward. We are now on row 24. And again, we're gonna stagger and single crochet two. Increase, single crochet two. Three times across our little area here. So one, two, increase, 
same stitch and then single crochet one two move up higher again there's a high of the dinos up here just because i keep hitting this little stand and i think that's probably annoying one two increase one two one two increase then one ooh, two we're then gonna again go forward with our 21 right there and moving along our stitch marker it is about this yarn today but I just keep splitting it and I'm kind of over it so I'm just going to lean into it Twenty-one. we are now on row 25 and we're getting close we're getting close to where we don't need to increase anymore but we still have about two more rows to go after this then we're going to single crochet five and increase to get us up to 42 stitches. Our goal is 48. So we're getting pretty close. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three, four, five. Increase. We're doing this three times so here's our second one two three four five increase and then one two three four, five, increase. And again, moving along and doing our 21. forward we're now on row 26 we're gonna move that forward and now for row 26 we're going to single crochet three increase single crochet three three times I know that's confusing one two three again if you don't like staggering you can just single crochet six and increase and it will work just fine but for now I'm going to single crochet three increase Single crochet three. I split him and I don't like how he looks now, so I'm going to go through the entire stitch just to make sure it doesn't pop out. Single crochet three, and then single crochet one two, three, increase, same thing with that stitch, one, two, three, and then final repetition, one, two, three, Increase This yarn is being so difficult it is frustrating me to no end. I've never had this much issue with cotton before One, two, three, four, five, six, 
this is an increase, there you go. Increase, and then one, two, three, move along marker and do our single crochet 21. And 21, move our tail forward. We are on row 27, which is our final increasing round. Very exciting, also very good because apparently I did not make my tail long enough. I might actually have to use a stitch marker at some point. Bummer. So here on row 27, our goal is to get up to our final 48 stitches. So we're going to single crochet seven and increase three times between our stitch markers on the front part here, which I think will work out just fine. So one, two, three, three, this yarn is being difficult. Did I get this on sale? I didn't. That's weird. Four. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. Seven. And increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, seven, there we go. It wants to split like nobody's business. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth stitch is what you want to increase. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven and our last increase. And of course it's got a you know split right there. What is going on? I love this cotton. I really do, but this skein is just being a pain in the butt right now. So eight stitch increase. We're again going to finalize. I'm actually just gonna take this off because it's not necessary anymore. We're going to single crochet across those 21 remaining stitches. So one, until we get back to our stitch marker at the front. And 21, getting there, 21. There we are. So I'm going to move that tail forward. So here we have 21 stitches on our work. We have our little neck. His, his, his neck looks very, very um, not quite right yet, but it will look better once you stuff it and get it a little bit more stiff. But here we have 48 stitches and I'm going to go off camera and single crochet around all 48 of these stitches for 12 rounds. So for rounds 28 through 39, I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna just single crochet around and around and around until I get it to the height that I want it, which is gonna be roughly around that way. So I'm gonna be right back as soon as I get that done and I'll show you how we close off the bottom. Super easy, just kind of the inverse of what we did on the top of the head as well. And this time we're gonna go back to just doing it times six instead of times three along the front. That's where the uniqueness of this body comes from. It's a little bit more different. So I'll be right back as soon as I get those 12 rounds done. All right, it is horrendously windy out, so if this cuts out randomly, that is because the power probably went out. It's been flickering quite a bit, so that's just a prerequisite. I've been having issues with this and this yarn. I don't know why my furls is giving me a hard time. I've never had this issue with I Love This Cotton, but you can even see it right there. I just keep splitting my yarn and it's driving me crazy, but then I switched over to my Bates, which is an inline hook, and I'm not having that issue, so I'm going to 
be showing how to do the rest of this with my Susan Bates. It's been driving me crazy. So I'm gonna pop this up. I stuffed my head and uh, continued on for my 12 rounds and now we're on round 40. And all we're gonna be doing here is simply decreasing six stitches every single round until we get back down to our original six stitches essentially. So we're gonna be going from 42, or excuse me, we're gonna be going from 48 to 42 to 36 to 30 to 24 to 18 to 12 and then six. But I am gonna show you how I do that and we are still continuing on with our staggering method. So I stuffed my head and there's some firmness there at around row 43 is when I stuff, but I try to avoid stuffing until I get the circle somewhat uh, reduced. So here we are. We're going to just show you how I do the first one of each round. I have lost my stitch marker because it was too short. So what I'm gonna do here is take a stitch marker and add it on to the very last stitch of what my row would be. We're gonna plop that there. And for row 40, you're going to stagger. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. Decrease. And then one, two, three. I'm gonna go off camera and do that five more times and then we will be on to row 41. All right, so we're on our last stitch of that repetition. I'm just gonna kind of let that sit there. That way I can tell where my stitches and rows begin, basically. We are now going on to row 41 and this one is not a staggering row. So we're just going to single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five and then decrease, one, two. And we're gonna repeat that five more times around. Final decrease, and now we're going on to row 42, and we're back on our staggering, so we're going to single crochet one and two. Decrease in the middle, and then one, two. Our goal at the end of this round is to get down to 30 stitches, which we will once we have five more repetitions done of this, and I'm going to pop right back again. That is our last stitch of that round. You can already see that we're starting to get closed up. I still am not going to stuff quite yet. I'm going to do one more repetition of decreases, which is round 43. Before I do that, I find that getting down to around 24 stitches, we're at 30 right now, is much better for stuffing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet three. So one, two, three, and then decrease two stitches. And I'm gonna continue that on five more times. And there we go for the last decrease. So here, our hole's getting fairly tiny. I'm gonna bounce the camera for good luck, as you do. And I have a bunch of stuffing, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough, so I'm gonna go stuff this off camera. What I like to do is I definitely like to focus a lot of my stuffing in the neck. That way it keeps it a bit more stiff. So that's the only thing that I really say, like, tip-wise that I do for stuffing the dino that I like to do. So I'm gonna go do that off camera real quick, make sure that there's a ton of stuffing really firmly placed into the neck, and then I'll be back to continue on with row 44. There's so many rows in this. Hold on, we're almost getting to the end. Be right back. All right, so we're stuffed and we're getting a little unwieldy, so I've put my camera up on a basket, so we'll see how this works. And I'm probably gonna be moving around quite a bit. So we are now on row 44, and what we're gonna do here is we're going to single crochet one. Find the next stitch. That's the decrease, so there we go. One. This is so difficult to show. Oh, because he's so big. All right, and then decrease, go through the actual stitch like that. And then single crochet one, and you're gonna repeat that five times more. All right, so now we are on row 45 and we are going to single crochet one. So let's go into, it's hard to show because he wants to roll while I do all this and my elbows are like digging into the desk. There we go. Bounce the camera for good luck. Single crochet one. 
and then try to avoid the, the clip and then decrease. You're gonna do that five times, just single crochet one and decrease the entire way around. I'm gonna do that off camera real quick. If I can actually get through these stitches. There we go. Be right back. All right, so I've taken the liberty to stuff. We are down to our last 12 stitches, and now we're on row 46, and our goal is to decrease, it's gonna be kind of hard to show, decrease every single one of these stitches. I'm gonna show you what I do that's a little bit different, though, on the very last stitch. So that's two that we're decreasing. This is our third decrease. I'm sorry that I'm kind of bouncing everywhere. It's the only way that I can show what I'm doing. Fourth, E, fourth, there we go. Fifth, and then not catching the fiber fill with my finger. That would be great. Fifth, come on, it's really tight. And it's really hard to show it at this angle. I've never done an amigurumi this big before on my channel, which is why I'm having such a hard time showing it. And then these last two that I want to decrease, I'm actually going to skip and slip stitch off into that remaining stitch. And here, I'm gonna pull that through. I'm gonna kind of make a little tail, have a big old gust of wind go by. And then we're gonna hit this with the scissors go like this, lean our little dino against our basket, make it work for us. We're gonna pull that through. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is grab our darning needle and we're gonna put our little end here on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna go from the front towards the middle of our stitches right here. And we're gonna pull that through and I'm gonna do that for each of these remaining stitches. I have an entire tutorial explaining how I do my fasten off for most demogurumi if you want me to go a bit more slowly, but this is generally how I do it and this is how you make the cute little dino body. So I'm going to go through all of these rather quickly, put our little darning needle through the side, try to get this darning needle as far away from where it started as possible, take that and then squeeze it tight. And that's all closed up. And in our next video, we're gonna go over how to make the scales, how to make the little belly, which is super easy, and how to make the tail and the little feet and arms. I'm actually really excited about that. We are all done with our body here. I think he turned out great. I think he turned out slightly smaller because I changed my hook. So I'm not sure if that's why, but generally he does look just slightly less tall than the other two. And I think it's because I changed my hooks along the way. It's a bummer on that, but it's fine. He'll just be a little baby brother dinosaur. And in our next video, again, we're gonna go over how to do the tail, the scales, the arms, the belly, and these cute little feet. I was debating doing this on their own little video because it's something that is very different than what I usually do. But I think I can do it all in one tutorial since this one's gonna be so long. The next one's probably gonna be just as long because I have so much to go over on that one. Stay tuned for that. I'm hoping to get it up within the next couple days after this is uploaded. I'm gonna upload this first. That way people can kind of get their bodies done and then go to this one. And that way I can stagger out my, my uploads a little bit more. I also have some more left-handed videos getting posted on my channel. I'm going to be taking some of my old videos and uploading left-handed versions of those. So you're going to be seeing those on Sundays every single week. So be tuned for that. Um, if you're interested in supporting the channel, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash knit. If you want to uh, help out the channel over there, we have free patterns, early access to stuff, and more. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Oh, and we have a Discord server if you're interested in talking to like-minded people. See you next week for part... Two.